Hello there folks and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we explore those topics of men's style, self-development and personal grooming and anything really that will help you on your journey towards Chap Nirvana, that place where we all seek to be perfect gentlemen. Now I do the occasional question and answer videos and in that I answer some of the interesting questions which some of the subscribers or viewers pose to me either in the comments section below or if you go to the about section on the main channel page you'll find an email address you can drop that email to me it uh, it pings into my direct email inbox and I'm happy to respond to you that way or occasionally via a video as we do now um, you'll excuse me for having the fire on it's mid-winter here in the UK and even though it's a little warmer now it certainly was uh, sub-zero a little while ago so the fire is making this all possible today so let's get started. So my first uh, question comes from a subscriber called Tom Van de... B I beg your pardon, Tom Van de Bosport. Uh, and this is, hi Ash, I love your uh, channel and your uh, guide videos on shoes. Right, so I adore British made shoes and particularly Cheney, Loke, Grenson and Alfred Sargent. Uh, I would love a pair of Crockett and Jones at some point, but they're too pricey. What are your thoughts on the shoes which I have? And I would, I know you like Sanders, but there tend not to be too many in the Brogue or Country Green, so I haven't got any yet, but to be considered in the future. So I think what Tom is asking there is my observations on the shoe brands which he's raised. So uh, let's start. Cheney. I've been to the Cheney factory in Northamptonshire earlier this year. They are a fantastic uh, manufacturer of gentlemen's footwear. I own a pair of their chucker boots myself. Absolutely in the top sort of, you know, the top 10% of men's shoes being made in the sort of off the shelf market. Not hideously expensive, you know, they're not cheap by any means. But then again, when it comes to men's footwear, you know, cheap, is something you want to avoid. It costs money to make good quality men's shoes and you have to expect to pay a bit of good money for a good pair of shoes. Chini are definitely in the category which I think they're worth investing your money in. They're going to last you decades and decades. Good quality. Wouldn't hesitate to buy. Second pair he makes a reference to there are Loke. Loke probably make up the vast majority of my personal shoe collection for the express reason that they're good shoes at a modest price. Now, be careful when it comes to Loke. Again, they're a Northamptonshire British shoe manufacturer with their heritage going back to 1880 when they were first founded by the Loke brothers and they're still owned by the Loke factory right now. Uh, sorry, the Loke family still own the Loke factory so you know you're still in the heritage vein with Loke but Loke makes a number of different product ranges and that's sort of they do a range called L1 they do a range called Loke Lifestyle uh, Design Loke the one brand the one range you want to focus in on is Loke 1880 named after their year of founding that's their premium range they're all made in the UK they're all made of top quality footwear but they're actually quite modestly priced, normally under £300. And if you shop around, you should never pay full price, full retail. You should be able to pick them up a lot cheaper than that. Grenson, another good heritage brand, Northamptonshire based. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got loads of Grensons in my collection because I buy loads of shoes secondhand off eBay. And Grenson is a brand which isn't incredibly trendy or fashionable at the moment. Hence, they, they do good prices when it comes to the auctions. So everybody wants Cheney, they want Crockett and Jones, they want Church. People are less keen on Grenson, but the, the quality is there. So look for Grenson if you're looking for a good pair of shoes. Alfred Sargent, bit like that, you know, bit the same as Grenson. Not thoroughly trendy or fashionable, but again, Crockett, uh, sorry, same as sort of Crockett and Jones. They're all made up there in Northamptonshire. A really good pair of shoes to get into uh, for modest prices when it comes to eBay, certainly. Uh, and he did mention Crockett and Jones, a pair of shoes he's saving for. One of my favourite pairs. I've I've never owned a pair of Crockett and Jones, but they're certainly a brand which exudes quality. You know, uh, something to do perhaps with the fact that Daniel Craig's been wearing them in his James Bond persona, in his sort of uh, iteration of Bond, and they've traded on that quality and that uh, that sort of stylability with the Bond name. But I think they make really good shoes up there in Northamptonshire, so definitely worth thinking about. Hope that helps with my thoughts on those shoes. 
Um, I got one here from somebody called Dom V Life. Hello, uh, I love your videos. I was wondering whether I should get a good quality bespoke suit for work or buy a suit off the rack of good quality material and take it to a tailor to get altered. So basically two options there. Go full bespoke to start with or buy an off the shelf or off the rack suit and get it heavily tailored so it fits you well. Um, entirely depends on your financial capability. If you've got the money and you can afford bespoke, and let's be honest, bespoke is going to be a couple of thousand pounds for the cheapest one you're going to get really for a good quality bespoke in a bricks and mortar tailor these days. Um, that is the best way to go. But if you don't have that financial punch, and let's be honest, the vast majority of us don't, I have never had a bespoke suit. I simply can't afford it. Um, but, you know, yes, buy a suit off the rack, take it to a tailor who's reputable, and you can have it altered in so many ways. You know, you can have the sleeves to fit perfectly. You can have the, the, um, the actual fit of the, the jacket, the coat, nipped and tucked to fit you perfectly. The trousers can be altered in a number of different ways as well. So entirely dependent on your financial capability. If you've got the money and you're prepared to do so, go full bespoke. I'm sure you'll never look back. I did a video some time ago with a friend of mine, John, who had a bespoke suit commissioned while he was in India. Um, have a look, I'll link that in the comment section below. Uh, have a look at that one. It'll give you an idea of a gentleman's experience of the bespoke suit experience. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you go down that route. All comes down to the moolah. The next question is from a gentleman called Ivancho and uh, he just says he discovered my channel, heartily enjoying it and his question is this. In his 50s he has um, started to suffer from a, uh, a condition called scoliosis which affects the posture and causes curvature of the spine so he's starting to, to lean forward uh, as he gets older and his interest in style originates in managing the condition and the way that his clothes fit him. Uh, he would be grateful if I could spare any insights in dressing to cope with his aging body uh, and the scoliosis and the effect of sort of walking forward with a pronounced uh, curvature of the spine. Well it's a good question uh, and one which approaches us all as we age in some degree or another. Our bodies are all changing all the time and not for the better once we get past a certain age. While scoliosis is a specific curvature of the spine issue, some of us will you know, uh, have issues with the gaining of weight or whatever it may be and it'll make us think more closely about the way that our clothes fit. And in a way, following on from the last question, how we cope with that can be determined by how we get our, or where we you know, we source our clothes from. Um, when it comes to something like a curvature of the spine or walking forward with a sort of uh, pronounced stoop forward, I would suggest that you need to think around, you know, wearing a jacket which has more definition to the silhouette. So, you know, padded shoulders, they will make or give greater form to the way that your body looks and it will accentuate the positives you have and hide the negatives. This is the skill of a good tailor as well. So if you're interested perhaps in hiding some of those negatives, whether it's the gaining of weight with a pot belly or uh, scoliosis, curvature of the spine, you know, a tailor can do remarkable things to hide these, these aspects of one's aging physique. So Mark out in your mind what you want, go to a tailor, discuss it and see what they can do to improve the situation going forward. Because I think a relationship with a tailor can only bring positive outcomes when it comes to coping with our aging bodies. That's the best advice I can give really. There's nothing we can do to alter that aging process. I mean we can stave it off and when it comes to weight you know we can control that but certain things you know we have no control over uh, and perhaps the tailor can tip the pack in our in our favor there so think about that. Uh, a question here from Davy Mack. I would be interested to see what you think of the Tudor Black Bay 58. I have a Tudor Steel and Gold 41 millimeter and find it's great until you wear it with a full length shirt um, and I guess he means there that the cuffs have difficulty getting over that 41 millimeter um, black bay, steel and gold. Um, however, the Black Bay 58 is slimmer and I'd be interested to hear what you think of it. Well, what I think of the Black Bay 58 is extremely positive. I really love its classic and stylish look. Obviously, it's a Black Bay and it is designed to evoke thoughts 
of the heritage, the retro era of men's wristwatches, the early divers. Uh, it's closely associated with the Rolex Submariner, clearly, because it, you know, obviously Tudor is a member of the Rolex family, and um, most divers of that nature can trace their, their DNA back to the original Rolex Submariner. I like the Black Bay 58 for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's 39 millimeters for a start, which I think is possibly the ideal size for a gentleman's diver's watch or a watch of any size. When you get bigger than that, now I've got a, um, a Tudor Black Bay GMT, which is a 41, same as this gentleman's S&G, steel and gold, and I find that it's far too chunky to wear with any sort of long sleeved shirt. It's quite robust and you, to get, you know, the shirt cuff will ruck up alongside or behind the watch because it's so big. So a little bit too big for formality. Great for, you know, events like this, taking out in the rough and tumble, uh, where you wouldn't want to wear perhaps a more dressy watch, but certainly a bit too big for formal life. The Black Bay 58 overcomes that with its nice slimmer profile. It's got a lovely retro look. The fact that it's got gold uh, indices and hands, which makes it very different from, say, for instance, the Rolex Submariner, which have white gold, gives it a lovely warming look. I think it has a, an element of warmth, which is not present in, so we say the Rolex Submariner, which is a very monochromatic look. The black and, and stainless steel and white gold makes it look very, you know, straightforward, elemental. Uh, but I do love the Black Bay 58. I have to say, I would own one tomorrow. The only reason I don't is because I own a Rolex Submariner. And if I was to buy a 58, that's two divers that look strikingly similar in the same collection. So if any time in the future I ever have to part company with my Submariner, the Black Bay 58 would be absolutely the watch I buy. So a classic watch. So I hope that helps Davy Mac. I personally wouldn't hesitate, pull the trigger, you won't regret it with the 58. It's an absolute beautiful watch. So a couple more questions to round it off. Oh god, I got quite a few here. Um, let's have a look. So this is one from Mario. He says, I find I found your channel a few weeks ago, found it very insightful, bought a pair of Look Broke boots. Um, as they have a rubber sole with a good year welt, I have been using them outside, but they're accumulating mud, mostly on the sides. Could you guide me in how to properly remove the bud, mud from the boots uh, without before shining them up? Is it proper to use this type of boots on walks and trails? Well, you can wear your boots anywhere you want. I would suggest that the Loke Brogues are more of a dress boot rather than a rugged outdoorsy boot. Um, but, you know, however you see fit, they're your shoes. When it comes to removing accumulated mud, this is the route I would personally take. Let that mud dry as naturally as possible on the leather, right? Don't be scraping it off when it's half dry. Let it dry and then remove it using quite a firm brush, just a normal brush uh, that you might use for cleaning, uh, you know, your shoes. But try and get that mud away with the brush. When you've got the majority of that mud away, um, I would then think about applying some saddle soap. So. Get some saddle soap. As you know, it's a soap specifically formulated for use on leather products, saddles originally, but great on footwear, great on other leather goods like, you know, bags or briefcases or whatever if they get dirty and muddy. Uh, but get some saddle soap, lather it up, and then clean those muddy boots, get away any residue of mud. When they're done, let them dry naturally in ambient temperature, not near a heat source. Just leave them in, you know, the, you know, in an outhouse or a utility room to dry naturally. When they've dried, you've got to condition them because you've removed some of their natural oils and waxes by giving that cleaning process. Something like Safia Renovator or some other form of good quality conditioning, nourishing shoe cream to bring some lovely color and life back to those shoes and they'll be great but best to avoid the mud if possible so wear the right shoes for the right conditions um, here we go a question from somebody called Vic and Lucy um, I'm not sure which shoe treatment to use Safia or Berghol any thoughts please I've never used Berghol so I can't pass any comment on that Safia has been my shoe uh, sort of care brand of choice for the last six, seven, eight years. Um, and I have to say, I have never looked back. Uh, up until that point, I used all of the, the traditional ones like Kiwi, Cherry Blossom and so on. Safia is a step above. It's also a step above in price. That's the downside to it. So you get really great quality products. 
but they cost a lot more money. Cut your cloth depending on your financial capability. What I would say with Safia, use the products appropriately. If you're gonna buy one thing from the range, buy Renovator, which is a great renovating conditioning cream. If you've got another product you wanna invest in, Pomodia Shoe Cream. It's got oils, it's got waxes, it also renovates and it conditions the shoe, but it also imparts quite a great deal of color pigment because it's heavily colored. So it's, it's great for bringing life back to maybe slightly faded footwear. And then finally, um, Medal Dior Wax Polish to finish off. So for me, when I look after shoes, it's a three-step process. Conditioning cream, uh, shoe cream, and then wax polish invest in that you won't go far wrong um, i've got one for you from john oliver i'm a flat cap wearer and want to find the bravery to invest in and wear a trilby i guess this is a confidence thing well i have to agree with you i mean i did a video on hats very very early days when i started this channel and i extolled the virtues of wearing hats because i personally love wearing a trilby i often wear a flat cap as you saw me wearing today a great sort of a great middle ground between formal hats and the informal baseball caps which you see everywhere. I think I've got a number of flat caps and they always look good. You can wear, you know, if you wear a solid coloured flat cap with, a, with an overcoat, it's a great way of keeping your head warm in keeping with slightly more formal clothing. Uh, something like this in a tweed, great for the outdoors in, you know, the rugged environments. When it comes to confidence, that is entirely down to you, John Oliver. I would suggest, well, be the person to buck the trend and wear a trilby. It's a classic, you know, totally gentlemanly thing to wear. It's not outlandish. It's not ridiculously different when you're talking about a fedora or a bowler hat, which really takes super confidence. The trilby is, again, a little bit of a middle ground. You can pull it off. You still see men wearing trilbies occasionally, particularly in more sophisticated cities, London, places like that. Um, less so when it comes to fedoras and bowlers, they are a bit more super confident specific. I own a trilby, I've got a couple of trilbies, I wear them in the winter months when I wear more formal clothing like an overcoat. Bite the bullet, don't go too expensive, right? So if you're uncertain, buy yourself a cheaper trilby, you don't have to spend a pile of money going to, you know, like Christie's or Locks or something like that in London and have a fantastic hat made. You know, buy something cheap, see if you can pull it off and then make a decision to invest at a later point. Have a look online, there's some great websites selling modestly priced hats and you won't go far wrong and, you know, treat it as a learning experience. Um, I've got another one here, it's from Wayne Guy. How long did it take to pick up a swirl or a scratch on the rose gold of your root beer watch? 24 hours or longer. Um, this refers back to a, a watch I, did, I purchased some months ago, Rolex root beer, which has uh, a stainless steel bracelet, but with um, solid 20, I think it's 18 karat rose gold inner um, links in that bracelet. And it's synonymous with picking up scratches. And there are those who are uh, big watch aficionados who are a bit anal about picking up any marks whatsoever on their watches. Of course, it picks up scratches and swirls. I don't have it on today, actually, so I can't uh, show it you. But actually, um, I don't care. When I wear a watch, I wear a watch to wear it. You know, I buy a watch to take part in my life journey. If I wanted to invest, money in something which appreciates in value, as I know a lot of people do with Rolex watches these days, watches are the wrong place to put it. There is so many variables in wrist watches, not least of fact is the style and trend. So at the moment, certain watches are incredibly stylish and trendy and everybody wants them. In a couple of years time, that will have shifted entirely. And the watches which are, you know, fetching a huge premium today, no doubt they'll still be you know, quite appreciative in value, but nothing like they will be at this moment in time. So in a variable world, don't think of a watch as an investment. Think of it as a timepiece to be worn. Don't worry about the scratches, the dents and the dings. For me, that is my signature on that watch and I wouldn't have it any other way. So don't get anal about it, don't worry about it. It certainly doesn't bother me. In fact, I look at those scratches and swirls 
in the gold links of that uh, watch and think to myself, you know, I look forward to putting more on there because that's part of my journey with the watch. So I'll give you one more. Let's finish off with one more. I've rabbited on at you a lot. If I can find one more. Um, oh no, I think we've done them all. We've done them all, or all that we're going to do today anyway. So I hope you enjoyed that gallop through some of the questions and comments that I've been asked in our time together here at the Chaps Guide channel. Um, don't hesitate to drop me your questions about anything, about any of the videos I've talked about, any of the topics that I cover. I'm even open to questions about me, because if we want to get to know each other, you know, feel free to ask me something and I will answer the question if I possibly can. Um, if you want to know more about your host who's offering these suggestions to you, it's up to me to qualify my competence to answer your questions. So ask away. If you have enjoyed this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and join us here at the Chaps Guide by leaving me comments in the comments section below. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram as well. Um, our handle is Chaps Guide, and I try and upload a new image every day of something which I encounter in my life, which I think is entirely chap. So until the next time, take care of yourselves, keep warm, and I'll see you again very soon. <laughs>